Hello, my name is Kyle Mikolajczyk, and today I'm going to show you how to use our cinema projector, the Christie CP2210. At the end of this video, you'll know how to operate the projector, show a video, and do it all by yourself. This cinema projector was purchased in 2014 for a large sum of almost $60,000. Now, it might seem like it's expensive, but this projector can show 2K resolution movies shipped directly from cinemas in an uncompressed, lossless format called a DCP, or Digital Cinema Package. We get these movies shipped to us on hard drives, we get keys to it on flash drives to decrypt it, and we can also put our own content on them by using a software called DCP-O-Matic 2, which is open source. Now we'll talk about that later, but right now I want to go over the basics of this projector. This projector was made in early, uh, late 2000s, and as a result, it runs on Windows CE6, which in case you don't know what that is, is essentially a stripped down version of Windows XP. The interface is not the best, but I will go over in detail how to use it later. This projector also has an integrated media server called the IMB S2 by Christie Digital that allows us to play decrypted movies from movie studios. I'll also show you how to use this in the interface in a bit. Although this projector is a digital projector, it is still very similar to 35mm projectors in some ways. For example, this projector still has a lens, and this projector still has a dowser and other features. Before we start using this projector, we should take the lens cap off. The lens cap is normally left on the lens, and once we take it off, it's a big lens cap. We usually, we stuck actually a piece of Velcro on it, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick it right up here, so we don't lose it. We always cover the lens because we don't want it to accumulate dust, and we don't want, um, we don't want to accidentally project something in the hall we're not intending to. The next thing I want to show you is the touchscreen panel. This touchscreen panel is pretty much how we interact with the projector. The first thing we're gonna do with the touch panel is to turn it off. Now, although the screen seems like it's off, the actual touch and interface is still on. Meaning that if we touch something on the middle with the screen off, it's still gonna interact with it. So the best thing to do is to take the pen and touch somewhere on the edge. That way we're not accidentally touching something we don't mean to. This is just a good rule of thumb to do. So I'm gonna to touch the top, which I normally do. The screen is now awake. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use the interface of the CP2210. Uh, the first step is to hold the power button down. So using your stylus, you would take your stylus and move it over to the power button. You would then hold it down and it will start powering on. All right, now that the projector has finished turning on, we can start using it. We have several different sections of the main home screen here. We have the preferred channel section, which basically allows you to change between a uh, format aspect ratio of the projector as well as the source. So we have internal or IMB here. We have external here, as long as uh, more external here. So basically different channels can be programmed to do different things. Um, you can view all of them if you want by clicking the all. Now that you will really have to use it, it's more for a very niche purposes. Coming back here. Uh, on the right side here, we have the controls of uh, most of the other functions that are important to the projector. The lamp button here, when you held on, will turn on the lamp instantaneously on the projector. The dowser will open up the dowser for the projector. The dowser is what lets light um, through. So even if the lamp is on, the dowser is still preventing any image from being shown until it's opened. Aux lens here, we don't have an aux lens, but this is where if you have a secondary lens attached to the projector that can be put on or off here, as you can see, it lowers in. Um, over here we have operational statuses, so green lights should always be on. If they're not, that's an issue. We have different various buttons down here that are kind of shortcuts that can always be accessed. So lamp, this is the dowser, this is the lamp, this is the power button um, channel we're currently put on. Um, this says that I'm remoting into it, um, your access level on here and if the IMB is good, along with time, of course. Now, one of the most important parts of the screen is the menu button. So when you click the menu button, it'll bring up a menu. The first thing you must do is log in. So clicking login, you are brought up different usernames. Now, the, the username is different for every projector, 
In this case, I'm gonna type mine in right now. And once you type it in, you're just gonna submit it. Okay, once you are logged in, the menu is suddenly gonna have a lot more access. In this case, I'm logged in as a service account right now, and this gives me pretty much most access. Starting from the top, we have status. Status shows you all the different you know, statuses of the projector. So you have um, cooling, temperature, interlocks, that type of things. The, uh, the important part is, uh, sorry, lamp info. And this is what we usually like to look at, and this tells you how many lamp hours have been used. So we know the lamp has to replace roughly 3,000 hours, and we are only at 1,140. No, pretty good. As you can see here, version warning. So apparently we have a warning, for, or a, at least, yeah, a warning for the lamp main. Now, I'm not really sure what this entails, but that's it. So the projector's pretty good overall. In the X button, we go back to the main menu. Diagnostics is when you run diagnostics. We're not going to go over that here, but um, the manual should tell you more. Channel setup is how you set up the channels. Advanced setup is how you change other things, such as the lens setup. Oops, sorry. It's the lens setup, the screen source file setup. Oops, sorry. Source file setup and the screen size. Screen file setup, excuse me. Most of these are only important if you need to configure something, so we're going to not do that in this video also. As for administrator setup, again, similar thing. There are more things to set up here that aren't needed. The, the most important tab is the Christie IMB tab. Now the IMB stands for integrated media block, or in this case is where all the movies that are shipped to us get stored. So when you drag over here, you have a bunch of different tabs. We can start with the control tab. Control tab shows you how to control things. Now, if you notice, it looks awfully like a video player because that's essentially what it is. You click content, you bring up all different content so you can play whatever you want. Let's say, oh look, we have quiet place for now. We can hit accept. And after a moment, this will load, and now the projector will be ready to play this as is. But what we care more about are playlists, because content loading is a single specific content. But we can also load playlists, which I'll talk about more in a second. As you can see here, the screen has very simple tools. You can hit play, and it'll start playing. A pause button will show up. You can drag the slider to change the position, and you can skip forward, that type of stuff. Now, a very important button is the lock button, so when you click this, everything grays out. And this is fantastic because you don't accidentally bump it during a movie. Um, you always lock it when you're not using the screen during a movie showing. But in this case, we're not showing it, so I'm gonna lock it. To unload the content, you can just press unload, and it'll unload the content, and now we can load. So playlists are what we care more about. Like I said, we can put multiple contents together and do different automation and other things at the same time, making our lives super easy. Basically click of a button, the entire previews, credits, everything can be run together. But I'm gonna first show you how to set that up. So we go over here. The next thing we're gonna show is playlists. So playlists is how we make playlists. <laughs> so as you can see here, we have one pulled up right now. I'm gonna pull up, uh, let's say Booksmart. Now we showed Booksmart a while back. We don't have the file anymore, primarily because uh, the key expired and we can get to that in a little bit. But essentially over here, what we have is a lineup. I compare this to Windows Movie Maker because this thing's pretty old. <laughs> but um, what we have here is we have, in this case, we set up a black most one second, so it's just a black screen. Uh, the Suicide Squad preview, another black screen. Um, we have a little thing we made called Showing Next Week that goes right before, and we were showing Tenet, I guess, at the time. And then we showed uh, uh, the rating for Booksmart, followed by Booksmart, and then finally a black screen again. Now, basically, um, it's very easy. To modify a playlist, all you do is drag, and you can just drop it wherever. Now, I'm not gonna do that at the moment here. To create a new one, we can just click Create, New Playlist, and let's just call this Video. Hit Enter, and now we have a blank thing. So what we would first do is drag the feature. So let me just drag, because we have Quiet Place currently unlocked, which again, we'll go over in a moment. Now that we have here, we need to add some other stuff. So we can sort. So let's start with some policy. So policy, in this case on our projector, we have black most one second. So we always put one before the movie starts. Ooh, sorry, before the playlist starts at the very beginning. Then you drag it again over here. Now we have one in front and one in the back. On the black most, what we want to do is add some automation. So you click on it and you hit automation tab. Now automation allows you to do things either to the projector or other things in your projection booth. In this case, we care about, oh look, this thing says, see the S right there, FR2 underscore S, that means it's scope. Meaning that we should set the projector to scope. So this will set the projector to scope. So I hit save. 
But let's add some other stuff. We also want sanity. Now this is a macro we made that basically turns the lamp on, opens the dials, and does everything else for us. So we also add that. Um, that should be everything here. Now if we go to the black most one second at the end, what we want to do is off. So off will, in this case, turn off the lamp and close the dowser and turn off. Oh, it won't turn off projector. You got to do that manually. But do that. Now the basic automation setup. Now let's say we want a preview of some kind. We can go back to content. We can then go to uh, trailer. Excuse me. Yep, trailer's at the top. And now we can pick our trailer. So in this case, how, again, as I said to read it a moment ago, we can see the S right there stands for scope. And we generally try to keep them the same here. So let's say we just want the Deadpool 2 trailer before. So we drag it in front. Now we have that. It's all good. Let's say this is it. We want from movie. Okay, we're done. We're going to hit save changes. It's going to save. It's very slow. And once it's saved, now I can show this on the, the playlist tab. So we go back to Christy IMV and we go back to control. Click load content. And then we can find ours. So in this case, I named a video, so it's alphabetical. So let's do video, accept. Now that we have the different the playlist loaded, we can actually see black most one second. If we hit play, it would start playing through each one. Now it's important to note the slider actually does each thing we're on. So notice how it says it's only one second long. Oh, interesting. I actually managed to get the full, interesting, cool. That actually tells you all the offsets and where it starts and everything, that's cool. But we have this all set up. We would just hit play, lock it, and we're done. But you're probably wondering, how do you get content onto the projector? Well, that is a great question. So what we want to do is go back to menu, we're going to Christy IMB, and we want to go to content. Now, content is everything on the projector. So in this case, you can see we have almost three terabytes of total storage, and we have about 1.5 terabytes used. Now, this is a listing of every single thing in this projector. As you can see, we have a lot of trailers over the years. Um, we also have keys. So in this case, we have a key right here for a quiet place, which is going to expire in a few days. Ingestible content. So this is um, this is where when you plug in something to the projector, uh, ship to us normally on a hard drive or on a flash drive for the key. It will show up in here when plugged into the ingest port. Ingest status will tell you the ingest status. Now, how we get a lot of our other stuff that um, is through remote content, and we can actually pull stuff off an FTP server. So in this case. It's very easy because we already have it set up. You can type it all out manually here, or in this case, you can just save it. So we're going to load the PC one, and we're going to hit list content. This is important. If you don't hit list content, oops. Sorry about that. I didn't hit OK. Accept. OK, now that we're on that, we hit list content. Wait a second, and the content will pull. If you want to ingest something, all you do is click on whichever one you want, and you hit ingest. Once you hit ingest, it'll show up on ingest status. And once it's done, you hit refresh. Once you hit refresh and it repulls, see it came back and it's all set again. You have it on the projector now. And yeah, that's pretty much it for oper use of this projector other than the advanced stuff. Now in order to show the movies we want weekly, we have to get them delivered somehow. In this case, the studios send us a hard drive. Here is an example of the hard drive, and in this case, we have a Quiet Place 2. We take this hard drive, and we stick it into the hard drive holder. In this case, this is where we have ours. You stick it in until it's all the way in. Lastly, on these projectors, we have something called marriage. Marriage is designed to prevent tampering with the integrated media block or the IMB on the projector. The reason is because Christie and the studios do not want people tampering with movies, stealing them, distributing them, or just modifying their product. So how it's designed is if someone tries opening this projector, the marriage is broken and we cannot show encrypted media, which is the stuff sent to us, until it is serviced and re-sealed or marriage is re established by an authorized Christie service technician. Now the reason why we talk about this is that it's easy to break the marriage sometimes by accident. Primarily bumping the projector, moving the projector, or even sometimes just wiggling cables wrong could cause a marriage to break or just a failure. So just be wary of it and if you break it we're gonna have a hard time. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or concerns please leave them in the chat.
Please like and subscribe if you also enjoyed the video. Thank you.